today we will uh, start talking about uh, uh, another portion of uh, module 2 where uh, it has been mentioned about uh, contact angle weighting and then surface tension probably you have already had an idea about surface tension from sir's class uh, but i will just give you a brief overview about it and then we will directly go to contact angle and how to measure the contact angle uh, how to measure the surface tension and uh, then what are the correlations that can actually uh, uh, that are there uh, in order to calculate the contact angle from uh, surface energy or vice versa uh, because contact angle is usually a experimental procedure so uh, to find out uh, a, uh, experimental parameter to find out so most often it's uh, like uh, we actually use contact angle data in order to calculate the surface energy and there are several correlations available uh, in the uh, literature and we will try to see some of them uh, because there is a wide variety of uh, uh, i mean um, equations available for or correlations available between uh, surface tension and uh, contact angle uh, so let us just uh, go very briefly about uh, what is uh, an interface and what is a surface and then from there we will try to develop a concept about uh, surface energy and that probably you have also studied in your chemistry classes in the first year itself uh, so, but again, I will try to keep it as short as possible because today will be the last class for from my end. Uh, I will not elongate much because probably you are having your semester from 27th, is it? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yeah. So, uh, what I will do is if time doesn't permit, I will actually solve some problems and uh, post it in the, you know, uh, small problems depending on the these correlations i will post it directly in the classroom and if you have any doubts we can keep one class for doubt clearing for all of you okay so uh but today i will try to cover as much as possible and we will just uh the semester will be up to there i, I will not elongate after this uh and uh And also, I mean, last week's class, I will just post it. I haven't posted it yet. So I will post that also. So uh, that will be your total uh, semester uh, uh, syllabus until today. And uh, from Sir's portion, whatever he has done, and uh, probably he will give, it, give you an overview about uh, what will be the, what are the important things and all those stuff. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that uh, there are mostly three phases gas liquid and solid and uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, interfaces and surfaces they are basically uh, the boundary between the binary systems now when we do have a uh, uh, air liquid system or liquid gas uh, we actually term it as a surface usually or solid air we or solid gas we term it as surface whereas interface is usually between liquid liquid phases sometimes in solid uh, liquid gaseous phase as well when there is some kind of a miscibility between these two phases together okay so interface and surface sometimes we use it interchangeably but uh, uh, more precisely when we have the similar phases we term it as interface when we usually have the similar phase we call it surface okay and uh, uh, what happens at the uh, mole molecular level at the, at the interface is very very important and that is basically the uh, the interest point for all of us uh, in the colloid and surface chemistry because uh, you know the disbalance between the forces at the interface does actually gives rise to which is known as surface energy okay uh, so that is why what happens when you have let us consider this is a uh, uh, water over here and uh, uh, let me just get up then um, Anyway, whatever it might be, so don't worry about it. 
Okay. So basically, what is happening over here is. Not coming. Probably in the PDF, this pain doesn't come. So uh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so what is happening? I hope you can see the uh, see the um, arrow over here. Okay. So what is happening at the interface is basically when you talk when we are in the in the bulk phase what is happening is at the molecular level the forces are balanced that means in this this molecule over here is surrounded by the similar molecules and the forces are in all directions are balanced so there is no net force in one direction okay uh, that is what is happening if you are just considering simply water air interface okay at the bulk water molecules are all uh, having similar kind of forces in all directions. So it doesn't, although there are kind of Brownian motions and all these things are happening at the molecular level, but if you just look at the forces at, at this particular molecule or any molecule within the bulk, then you will see the forces acting on a particular molecule in all directions are usually similar. Whereas if you just take any molecule at the interface, what is happening is there are uh, forces which are, uh, you know, uh, because these two molecules are similar molecules, so the forces are acting in this direction, and there are dissimilar molecules at the in, on the on uh, in the air uh, interface, and so that means force act their force over here. Because because of the, the forces acting on this molecule or uh, in these upward directions are much less compared to the forces acting in this uh, downward direction. Okay, and that is why when you see that, uh, and this is why it is known as anisotropic field or an anisotropic uh, field force that is acting on on the surface molecules or in and uh, you will uh, for this reason you will see kind of a uh, you know uh, inward pull of the surface molecules and that's why for I mean uh, for the lowest area possible it actually contracts to a uh, per unit volume it contracts to a sphere and that is why you whenever you see a water it, it is always a water droplet there is uh, rainfall or anything the it forms in the in the in the in the spherical uh, uh, you know form of a sphere but be, due to the gravity it actually elongated and kind of drop not spherical in nature, but usually when they form, they are basically spherical in nature because that is basically the smallest surface area per unit volume. And uh, uh, this is due to the uh, surface contraction or the uh, inward pool of uh, uh, the forces uh, which are basically acting in the inward direction. So that's why you obtain this which are always always spherical in nature and, uh, due to the uh, and, uh, 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 Man, connection take the break connection take the break for connection take the break for network <laughs> 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 <laughs>
আমি যার জন্য মানে লাস্ট 7 10 10 মিনিট ধরে ট্রাই করছিলাম জাস্ট এখন না আবার কানেক্টই হচ্ছিল এখন ঠিক আছে মানে যখন কাজে কথা বলছি তখন ঠিক ঠিক থাকছে যখন কাজে কথা বলছি তখন ঠিক থাকছে দেখা যাচ্ছে চলো তাহলে এখন যখন ঠিক আছে তখন আমি কন্টিনিউ করি ওকে uh so uh, if you want to bring any molecule from the bulk to the surface of the uh, to the surface you require a uh, certain energy but, uh, uh the energy that is being actually for for uh, for usually there are two terms okay surface tension and surface energy when these energy be used uh surface energy most often is used for Uh, solid surfaces, whereas uh, uh, surface tension is used for liquid, liquid, okay, and gas both. Uh, so uh, these two terms are interchangeably used, but uh, but uh, just uh, whenever you are using for solid, you please use surface energy rather than surface tension. Uh, so the surface free energy is nothing but uh, the work that is W required to increase the surface area of a liquid or solid by unit area uh, is known as surface energy and its units are millijoule per meter square. So W that is the work required uh, to increase the surface area of a liquid or solid is proportional to uh, the area that is delta A. We can write it. The proportional constant is nothing but your uh, surface-free energy. So gamma, we can write it in terms of uh, W by uh, delta A. Okay. So this is basically the uh, in millijoule per meter square. If you are putting it in that context, uh, so surface tension is basically the force acting at the right angles to the line of unit length in the liquid surface and its units are millinewton per meter and uh, the surface free energy and surface tension are numerically equal as i have mentioned earlier and uh, dimensionally they are also equivalent but uh, surface tension uh, just use it for so water is usually surface tension of a that is room temperature and surface free energy millijoule per meter both are but uh, we usually often write it but there has all mentioned this thing i'm not going to do it uh, so uh, i'm just omitting this part over here so let us just uh, capillarize also probably he যখন ফ্লোতে আর কি পড়াচ্ছেন তখন কেটে যাচ্ছে এখন আবার যেরকম ঠিক হয়ে গেছে পড়িয়েছেন <laughs> Uh, okay, so we will just uh, see uh, the question I answered. Hello, hello. Can get it, get it, ask it. Okay. Get it, get it? Eh, hey, please. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. ওকে <laughs> 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 
why this so how can they actually uh, slide on the water or uh, how can they actually walk on the water they when there is no surfactant basically uh, is there they can easily walk on this due to the surface tension okay although they they are ha uh, uh, at their legs they are having some textures which actually helps them to float on the surface uh, of the water or walk on the surface of the water uh, but this is mostly due to the surface energy or surface tension of the uh, water now uh, if you just put uh, different uh, you know um, uh, different surfactants yeah. with uh, di uh, surfactants with different concentrations you will see with increase in surfactant concentration uh, the 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 water striders will start uh, immersing in the water so they cannot uh, float on the water anymore so they will go down because the, because uh, with increase in concentration of the surfactant the surface uh, surface tension beca becomes less and less and that's why uh, uh, they cannot walk on the water anymore uh, this is also is not needed so So we will now move to uh, one phenomena which is very very important for uh, our daily life as well as which is from the point of view of colloidal chemistry or uh, colloidal uh, you know uh, here. colloidal surface colloidal uh, colloid chemistry then it is very very important that phenomena is known as wetting and. Uh, uh, the process of wetting of a solid by a liquid, usually by water, is often applied or it occurs naturally. Uh, basically, I mean, we do have in our daily life, uh, we do have lots of application of this wetting uh, by knowing or by unknowingly, we, we uh, I mean, we wet our hands and body with water. So that is basically if the water doesn't wet the surface you cannot uh, wash your hand with water okay so uh, after having a meal we need to clean the dishes thus wetting them uh, often we put dirty clothes into washing machine adding some detergent at first it is wetted uh, the soil has to be wetted for plants to grow the plant i mean every other application the wetting is very very important phenomena even if you go to the uh, just look at the uh, coatings or paintings you have to paint the surface i it has to actually wait the surface then only you can paint otherwise the uh, painting or the coatings will actually uh, will be a separate thing and uh, wall will be a separate entity and you cannot actually coat the surface with uh, with paints uh, then pharmaceutical and cosmetic products are needed to wet tissues or skin well. Uh, glues and additive tapes must be wet, must wet a surface. Uh, ad adhesives actually uh, plays or adhesive industry also is uh, where the uh, is a very important applications of waiting characteristics uh, painting of solid surfaces already i have mentioned dyeing of fibers lubrication coatings all these things needs waiting to happen one of the most important processes which is totally based on differences in wettability of the surfaces is rotation process of mineral ores enrichment uh, which is also a direct application of waiting okay so uh, waiting is uh, very very important uh, it actually uh, I mean, you cannot separate waiting from, from our daily life.
Uh, so before going to spreading, yeah, I, we will go to spreading coefficient. Fine, we will go to spreading coefficient and then we will come to contact angle. So spreading coefficient is uh, something or spreading power is something. Suppose as I, as I was giving an example of uh, the paint is being uh, 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 applied on the surface of surface of a wall. So if it doesn't spread well, if the coating doesn't spread well, if it is very thick, it doesn't spread. So you cannot co uh, paint this wall, right? So uh, the spreading. Although we unknowingly use that term a lot, but what the spreading means is the free energy difference between a bare solid uh, directly in contact with the vapor and the solid covered by a flat uh, or thick layer is nothing but the uh, spreading coefficient. So spreading coefficient is given by a gamma SV. This is uh, the interfacial tension between solid vapor minus gamma LV plus gamma SL, where gamma LV is the liquid vapor interfacial tension and gamma SL is the solid liquid interfacial tens tension. So when I'm I'm just putting it, uh, suppose we have a solid surface, uh, this is a wall that we want to coat. So if we put it in, the, in, in, in air, so the bare surface in contact with the air, that the, the energy or the surface energy or the interfacial tension that is gamma SV, uh, that is given by gamma SV, whereas you apply the coat and that will give you at the interface, it will give gamma SL, whereas uh, at the top of the coating surface, it will give you gamma LB. Okay. So if a spreading coefficient is greater than zero, there will be complete weighting, whereas if Spreading coefficient is less than zero. There will be partial weighting, and you will see this kind of phenomena. So there will be kind of a drop formation on the surface. So I don't know whether you have noticed or not. Uh, uh, during uh, ra raining, if it it is just a drop is forming on the uh, uh, you know on on um, on your uh, cars window glass or uh, the uh, front glass, you will see that it just forms one drop. It's sitting on the surface. Okay. That means there is a partial weighting that is being taken place. But when uh, the, you have a lot of water, it completes the wave, uh, weight the surface and you will find there is a film of water on top of your uh, glass surface. And there, that means there is complete weighting. Okay. So, uh, uh, so that is basically due to the uh, due to the spreading coefficient, and uh, obviously, uh, I will come to contact angle, and then we will understand more about it. So what is happening is uh, when you have spreading. You form a film on top of the surface. You have complete weighting. Everything actually completes. I mean, it's it's just uh, uh, it forms a layer on on the surface of the uh, surface of the solid, or the liquid actually forms the surface of the solid. Then basically, you find there will be a drop, a small drop. There is partial weighting. Uh, when theta equals to uh, 90 degree, what is theta? Theta is the contact angle. So basically, when theta is 90 degree, then uh, we, would, we do have gamma SL equals to gamma SV in that particular particular uh, case. When there will be a negligible weighting, we do have contact angle greater than 90. And uh, when there is, it, it is not weighted by the surface, you will see that this drop rate. Ma'am, what is the uh, gamma SL? Sorry? Gamma SL in the key? Gamma SL is interfacial tension between the solid and the liquid. Okay. S for solid, L for liquid. From now on, always we use this. Okay. So basically, the I haven't mentioned about contact angle yet. So contact angle is nothing but this angle over here. Suppose you have if there is a liquid drop on the on surface on a solid surface, so the angle with angle that the drop is making with the solid surface is known as the contact angle okay so at this moment when it doesn't weight the surface that means uh, theta is this contact angle is greater than 90 uh, one uh, is uh, is 180 degree that 
at that moment basically the water droplet will rolls off the surface and it will not stay on the surface so um uh, this uh, when when the contact angle is more than 150 degree we call that as super hydrophobic uh, surface when it is more than 90 degree we call it hydrophobic surface okay uh, so if water is making a contact angle more than 90 degree with the surface that is known as hydrophobic surface if it is more than 150 degrees 150 degrees uh, we co term it as super hydrophobic surface uh, so this theta basically this contact angle this is the, this angle over here this is basically depends on chemical constitution of both the solid as well as the liquid uh, hard solids usually the covalent ionic or metallic surfaces high energy of the surfaces gamma is uh, uh, is around 500 to 5000 millinewton per meter whereas weaker molecular crystals uh, van der waals forces and hydrogen bonds are formed low surface energy uh, gamma sv is around 50 millinewton per meter okay uh, now we will come to more details about the uh, contact angle and uh, the uh, the weighting phenomena so now we will consider weighting on a homogeneous smooth and rigid solid and then a famous equation after the name of Young's uh, that is known as Young's uh, equation and that is mostly used for measurement of the contact angle okay or measurement of the uh, surface tension by using a contact angle uh, measurement uh, experimentally so thermodynamic expression for the surface energies of a system at thermal and mechanical equilibrium can be given by this equation over here where gamma 1 2 will be equals to do f by do a 1 2 uh, so this is a force and area uh, at a certain temperature and uh, uh, you know uh, the chemical potential mu i f is the free energy a 1 2 is contact interface between phase 1 and 2 and gamma 1 2 is the interfacial energy or the surface free, surface free energy and 1 2 either is solid liquid we term it as SL SG is for solid gas and LG for liquid gas and NL for liquid liquid now if you just consider this drop over here resting on a solid surface and just try to do the force balance so if there are surface tension over here in this direction that is gamma sl then there is a sur surface tension gamma sv because this is basically solid vapor interface and obviously this is a liquid vapor interface so uh, uh, surface free energy will act on this direction gamma lv now if you just do the force balance across uh, this point so what will happen is nothing but uh, gamma sl plus gamma lv cos theta will give you gamma is because uh, because this drop is resting on this surface so these forces will actually sorry somebody wants to join balance with each other and you will obtain what is known as Young's equation that has been written over here so gamma sv equals to gamma sl plus gamma lv cos theta okay now if we uh, for a combination of uh, uh, certain solid and liquid combination if we know the contact angle by experiments because there there are certain uh, experimental measurement techniques which can directly use to calculate the con contact angle of a, of a solid liquid system uh, so if you just know the uh, uh, contact angle and uh, uh, you know uh, by using different liquids on top of a solid surface either you can measure the surface energy of the solid or vice versa uh, so you can use a liquid at certain liquid and if you want to uh, find out the surface tension you can use several solids with known surface energy and you will obtain the uh, surface tension of the liquid uh, how to do that i will just tell you uh so weightability of the powders if you are considering so that means we do have a powder means it's a solid uh then if we actually immerse it in 
in, in, in liquid. So you do have this vapor phase, this liquid phase. So gamma SL is acting in this direction. This is my theta, that is contact angle. Gamma LV will acting in this direction and gamma SV in this direction. So we can write gamma SV will be equals to gamma SL uh, plus gamma LV cos theta. Again, gamma LV cos theta will be acting in this direction. Okay, so uh, this is uh, for solid particles weighted by a liquid and uh, contact angle of water on a solid substance or sol solid substrate will give you uh, this equation, which is again the Young's equation that we have actually mentioned earlier. So I'm not going into the details, but uh, just look at this uh, 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 contact angles on different substrates. Uh, the contact angles that has been measured by water. Uh, so on Teflon, the contact angle of water is having around uh, 110 degrees. PMMA, it is 59.3. Platinum 40. Glass is very, very small. And gold is zero. That means gold is complete uh, uh, spreading has been achieved. Glass also almost uh, complete spreading. Uh, platinum, it is a partial weighting. PMMA, again, partial weighting. Teflon is uh, these two, PMMA, platinum, glass, gold, all of them are basically hydrophilic in nature. And uh, But Teflon, on the other hand, because it's more than 90 degree, it is hydrophobic surface. Okay. Uh, now, um, we will just try to see what is adhesion cohesion in relation to weighting. Uh, so, basically, work of adhesion is the separation to create two new surfaces from one interface. That is known as Dupri's equation. So, uh, uh, basically, you are having this gamma SV, if, if you are considering this, uh, one block and this is another block you want to make for two dissimilar surfaces you want to make a single sur surface and that is given by the work of addition w a is equals to gamma s v plus gamma l v this two minus gamma s l okay and uh, work of cohesion is the separation to create two surfaces uh, for a liquid and uh, so w c will be equals to two gamma l v because both are in the vapor phase. So this is, again, just uh, what is, uh, you know, uh, gist of what we have talked about. So this is Young's equation. Uh, this is young Dupree's equation, which is actually work of addition. And uh, spreading coefficient, we can write it in terms of the work of addition and work of cohesion. So uh, spreading coefficient is nothing but work of addition minus work of cohesion. And that will be given by gamma SV minus gamma LV minus gamma SL, which will be equal to gamma LV into cos, phi, cos theta minus 1. And uh, conditions for complete spreading is uh, this uh, spreading coefficient has to be greater than or equal to 0. Less than equals less than 0 is uh, partial weight, partial spreading. Ma'am, in the first case of addition, mm -hmm. uh, now, while calculating the work of addition, why, yes. why are you subtracting gamma SL now? Okay. So, uh, so suppose uh, if you just take it from the, uh, from the other side, okay? So, suppose you are having a block, a single block with two heterogeneous surfaces, okay? So, this is a solid surface and this is a liquid surface. And uh, that means you want to actually create two surfaces out of this one block. And when you put both the blocks in the vapor phase, so you are creating gamma SV, this surface and this surface, gamma LV. But this surface energy was already present at the beginning. So whenever you are actually creating this, you have to minus it. Then only you will get the work. Uh, of addition from uh, from that uh, calculation because in this particular case because the there is no it, it is of the same same block it is not the dissimilar materials that is or no interface is present over here that's why we have given this as to gamma lv but because we are having two heterogeneous phases over here so that surface energy has to be uh, uh, sub subtracted from whatever the energy that is being uh, generated over here is it clear 
क्वेश्चन देख ल बी So basically, what is happening? Uh, suppose you are having a flat, uh, you are having a, a petri dish, or you are having just a container, okay? And you put some water in it. Now, if you have a very small capillary tube, and you just place it on on top of that, you will see there will be a climb of the water through this capillary, okay? Uh, this rise in capillary is uh, due to the waiting process. and uh, basically the contact angle it makes over here so this is the vapor phase and this is the liquid phase and with the solid so liquid the angle liquid making with the solid surface is known as the contact angle so this is the angle contact angle over here we are considering this as theta and uh, let us consider this uh, as uh, uh, the radius of this capillary is r and so the uh, gamma lv cos theta or gamma uh, yeah gamma um, gamma and this is basically gamma sorry so this is basically the uh, the solid liquid yeah so this is basically the gamma lv so this is gamma lv cos theta and this is the let us consider this as the height of the meniscus okay so we consider the uh, lower meniscus and if there is a kind of a depression uh, um, capillary depression that you actually see for mercury so if you just put uh, if you have mercury in in a flat dish and then you put a cap, uh, capillary tube that is very very small narrow diameter diameter tube on top of that surface you will see that there will be a capillary depression and that is basically due to the uh, uh, you can explain it from the kelvin equation uh, which probably has sir, sir has already mentioned so i'm not going into the details but this is the two phenomena that is basically achieved you can achieve due to uh, waiting so uh, what is happening okay so now there could be two situations in the capillary uh, rise method one is either theta is uh, less than 90 degree another case like uh, if you put it, put a glass glass tube then you will see that theta will be less than 90 degree if you put a paraffin tube then you will see that theta will be greater than 90 degree okay and uh, that is uh, basically due to the adhesion and cohesion Uh, that is being taking place uh, within the solid uh, within the solid liquid surface and uh, if you just put uh, in the kelvin equation this is ln p by p not equals to 2 gamma vl divided by r rt r is the this r is basically the 
uh, radius of the uh, tube and this r is the gas constant t is the temperature uh, molar volume of the liquid gamma is the surface tension that is gamma lv into cos theta will give you ln p by p naught that is basically the pressure differences between the two phases okay uh, or two uh, two surfaces basically so this is what you will actually find out from the uh, kelvin equation uh, then um, Okay, contact angle hysteresis uh, is something like suppose you are uh, trying to put a water, water droplet on on uh, on a solid surface, then the the angle that is being made by the liquid with the solid surface is the advancing contact angle because you are constantly you are just putting what uh, putting liquid on. Uh, liquid as a drop on the top of the surface if you are just taking out this drop then you will see there will be kind of a um, um, contact angle again it, this drop will make but it will try to shrink and that is basically is known as receding contact angle now usually if everything remains constant if there is no other uh, uh, I mean, uh, nothing changes, then this advancing contact angle has to be equal to receding contact angle, but that is not the case. You will see there will be a, always a contact angle hysteresis due to uh, different, uh, uh, you know, uh, parameters like uh, uh, obviously the surface roughness, surface heterogeneity, then, uh, then obviously uh, the uh, the cohesive and adhesive forces so for all these things you will always see there is a contact angle hysteresis which is uh, between 5 to 20 degrees usually now uh, there are several experimental measurement techniques which can be actually used for measurement of contact angle most widely used are two methods one is Sessile drop method, another one is Wilhelmy plate method. So, in the sessile drop method, what is happening is I don't know whether I am having a better. Uh, no, I don't. Just a moment. Okay, in the other. Okay. So in the Wilhelmy plate method, in this, okay. So this is a sessile drop method. Uh, so in the sessile drop method, because what is happening is you are just putting a drop of water or drop of any liquid on top of the uh, solid surface, and then you just measure by using a, 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 a software. You can measure what is the contact angle by carpeting of this liquid uh, with a proper you know uh, contrast with, with the background you can measure the what will be the contact angle and uh, that you can use for calculation of uh, uh, gamma lb okay that is the uh, the surface tension now this is one of the method another method is known as wilhelmy plate method in that method okay so this is the equipment so you do have a pump from which this is your sample holder this is the camera okay and this is your background so uh, with a light so if you, you push a light over here you put you put your sample on top of the sample holder and then you place a certain amount of liquid that is usually it's three microliter so if you just put three microliter of the liquid and it, with the help of a camera you can just see uh, how the contact angle changes with time that is contact angle uh, kinetic contact angle uh, change with time you can measure also, you can measure the static contact angle. From static contact angle, you can calculate what is the uh, surface tension of that particular material. And now, uh, so this is how it looks like when it is in the pendant drop. You can, uh, for, by using the pendant drop, that means it, it, when it is just hanging from the syringe, uh, basically, from there you can calculate the surface tension of the liquid by by having by, by knowing the uh, you know uh, the uh, by actually using certain uh, geometric measurements, which 
uh, the details I'm not going into at the, at this moment, but you can measure the surface tension from there. And also uh, for uh, sessile drop method, uh, where you, you have placed uh, a liquid drop on top of the surface, you can go for adams Rashford method in order to calculate the uh, surface energy of the solid. Now, um, another method is very, very important, uh, is known as uh, um, Wilhelmic plate method. In this particular method, although, yeah, in this particular method, what is happening is with the help of a balance, you just place or you, you immerse this uh, uh, plate uh, solid surface which is kind of a plate uh, that into the water or any other liquid for which you want to measure the uh, surface energy and then uh, that is when you are immersing it that is basically advancing contact angle and then after certain time you just reverse it back that is you take it up and the contact angle it is making with the solid surface is known as the receding contact angle and you will always see there is a hysteresis uh, between them but uh, uh, from there you can calculate uh, from the uh, force you can calculate for the, uh, the surface tension. Okay, so this is a balance that is being actually used over here by using, um, and I'm not sure whether I have this formula, where F equals to comma into, this is for the capillary rise, but for Wilhelmic plate method, the, the, the equation is nothing, just, just the uh, perimeter, the weighted perimeter into the, uh, into the force that is actually basically being used over here. Okay, so this, uh, these are the two methods which are important. You, you just don't need other methods for uh, surface energy calculation at the moment. Uh, okay, now the important parts being, I'm not going into the detergency at the moment, so important parts being, if suppose uh, till now the uh, the contact angle that we have talked about or the equation that is Young's equation that we have talked about is for uh, homogeneous surfaces with uh, no roughness or uh, smooth surface rather homogeneous smooth surface which is very very idealistic case. But whenever you will just look at in details about the surface or when you go for the um, microscopic uh, viewpoint you will see most of the surfaces are having certain amount of roughness so that is basically incorporated by you by wenzel equation there is also another uh, method of using uh, method of calculation of the surface surface but wenzel method is the most widely applicable one where cos theta apparent this is the theta apparent that suppose you put a drop on this surface you will get the uh, this is the apparent surface uh, con or apparent contact angle you will obtain okay but the actual contact angle or intrinsic contact angle is usually much larger than what we have found and that's why they have incorporated a uh, 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 correction factor which is r which is nothing but the actual area divided by the apparent area okay so from this you can calculate what will be the uh, intrinsic uh, contact angle from apparent contact angle uh, calculation or measurement. So usually weightability is improved by roughness for hydrophilic surfaces, but gets worse for the hydrophobic surfaces. So if you have a hydrophilic surface, if you have certain amount of roughness, obviously it will uh, weight the surface more. If you are ha having a hydrophobic surface, if you add up some more uh, surface roughness into it, you will see that it will become more and more hydrophobic. So the contact angle will increase further. Okay, so here we have, uh, I have just written for, uh, so in this particular case, adhesion is greater than cohesion. So the surface is hydrophilic in nature and contact angle is less than 90. 
when addition is much much smaller than the cohesion then you find that the surface to be hydrophobic in nature contact angle is greater than 90 and when its addition is much 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 less than cohesion you find that the surface is super hydrophobic where theta is greater than 150 degrees Actually, what is happening is that is the answer in this in this slide, because what is happening is nothing but uh, suppose if you have all of you have seen that on a lotus surface, uh, the water doesn't stay, right? It rolls off. Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, so, but uh, it is due to the, uh, there are so many things due to the surface energy, yes. But if you just look uh, uh, under a microscope, this surface is actually looks like this, this sort of surface uh, under, the, under, the, uh, under the microscope. So it do, does have lots of small humps, as well as these humps does have a lot of fairy, uh, you know, uh, surface roughness that actually creates the surface roughness. And that is why this water drops that cannot stay on this surface anymore. It just rolls off and having a contact angle more than uh, or more than um, uh, 150 degrees. Actually, it is actually 180 degrees in case of lotus drops or lotus leaf. Okay. So that is why it's just say, it, it, it just says that this is rocky drop because it just rolls off. It doesn't stay on the surface of this uh, solid surface. Okay. Okay. Uh, a lot of you probably have uh, seen or heard of self-cleaning surfaces. Nowadays, all, all of our uh, buildings, mostly most of our buildings, uh, you know, uh, not our buildings, but the big buildings which are having a glass uh, at the outside. Have you seen there anybody to go up and clean the surfaces? No, right? No, Usually no. the surfaces get cleaned up by themselves because there are a certain amount of coating on top of the glass which is having this kind of humps on it or the surface roughness on it. So when the water droplets are basically when there is rain or the, some amount of water that is coming out or some amount of water droplets that is actually going down, it actually take these uh, dirty darts and they just rolls off. But if these uh, water droplets basically waste the surface, then you, it cannot take up the darts on the surface of these uh, um, solid surfaces. And that is why these surfaces is known as self-cleaning surfaces because water droplets does not uh, doesn't uh, 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 wait the surface, but it just cleans the surface uh, while while passing while 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 uh, you know uh, rolling off from the surface. So that is why uh, this is the idea behind the self cleaning surface. So if we can make a super hydrophobic surface or hydrophobic surface rather uh, that actually will uh, self clean itself. Uh, and super hydrophobic surfaces where the contact angle greater than 150 is uh, some, it is also gaining a much more applications because uh, suppose you go to the uh, uh, places where there is a heavy amount of, uh, you know, snowfall. So from in those uh, areas, the surfaces or the, uh, you know, in those areas also is having uh, buildings and uh, uh, cars and everything, right? So what is happening over there if you can have a super hydrophobic surface uh, then um, the snow will not accumulate on the surface so it will rolls off and in that way basically you will be uh, devoid of cleaning uh, but again that is that that is uh, that has become reality but still it is very costly So these are certain kinds of uh, surface roughnesses which can be induced in the um, 
surfaces. So these are some names like nano grooves, uh, nano spikes, uh, nano thresholds, nano humps, which you can find it from in the lotus leaf, uh, nano burls, nano ribs, nano ladders, uh, nano bumps, nano knobs. Uh, so these are the kind of the things that you can find uh, in the um, in case of uh, I mean uh, the surface roughness. Now, whenever I say these things, already in nature, enough amount of examples are present with all these kinds. Only thing is nowadays we try to mimic what is already there in the nature. So uh, people started uh, making uh, surfaces which are hydrophobic or super hydrophobic in nature by using nano harms or nano knobs. Uh, but uh, already in nature, we have seen that it is already present. Uh, like in, in case of water striders that I have mentioned earlier, uh, if you just look at their legs, uh, they are there. There, there you can find uh, some nano burls as well as some nano nano knobs over there. Okay. So these kind of things are already uh, present in nature. Only thing is we try to mimic uh, that. And uh, this is the lotus leaf, which is naturally present, which is super hydrophobic in nature. Uh, and artificial uh, super hydrophobic uh, surfaces, will, if you just put a water drop on top of it, you will see this kind of circle. And if you have a minimum amount of tiltation uh, or tilting, you will see that this will rolls off. And uh, uh, this is kind of the uh, kind of the things uh, that is finding a lot of applications in uh, in in in, uh, in several buildings and uh, stuff. So, like traditional paints, where you can have lots of you know uh, lots of uh, uh, ice accumulation. Whereas for lotus effect paint, you will find there is no ice accumulation on top of the surface. So, <clears throat> these are the things. And now I'll just move another small parts. And we will stop there. A uh, couple of important equations, depending on which we will solve the uh, problem. So already we have mentioned these things. Oh, I have to just go to the sharing. Okay, so there are certain direct theories we, which by applying which we can calculate the surface tensions. Uh, so the first one, first and foremost, is Gurifalco good surface tension theories, which says that uh, if you want to measure the surface tension uh, of, uh, say, gamma AB, okay, so this will be nothing but the surface tension of gamma A plus gamma B minus 2 phi square root of gamma AB. So phi is nothing but uh, is uh, 4 into Vs, Vl to the power 1 third, uh, Vs to the power 1 third plus Vl to the power 1 third whole square. So this is nothing but the molar volumes of the solid and the liquid. And uh, you can actually, uh, you can actually calculate uh, the gamma AB uh, or surface tension interfacial tension between uh, two surfaces by using Girifalco good uh, equation. I'm not going into much details due to time constraint at the moment. I'm just showing you the, uh, the give you the uh, the equations so that uh, you can just uh, use it for your calculation purposes. Now, this is known as Newman's relation. It, using this also you can calculate the interfacial tension between two surfaces. So this will be given as uh, gamma A plus gamma B minus 2 square root of gamma A gamma B uh, e to the power minus beta gamma A minus gamma B square, where beta is a, is a parameter which is having, or you can say it mostly it is a constant, and the value is 0 0.0001247 meter square per millijoule whole square. You don't have to remember this value. 
uh, if there are problems coming out from this new menstruation, then obviously I will provide this vitamin. Uh, then Fox comes in and he said uh, there is uh, uh, the surface tension is having two separate parts. One is the dispersion uh, of the dispersion uh, um, part, and another one is specific part. So the total surface tension is actually summation of the dispersion as well as the specific part. And he has given this equation in order to calculate the interfacial tension, gamma AB equal B, will be equals to gamma A plus gamma B minus 2 square root of gamma AD, that is the uh, dispersion of gamma, uh, gamma A and gamma B D. Okay, so that is all, again the dispersion part. Now the wens wendens equation, wens wendens actually uh, further says that uh, they have incorporated the specific term also in order to calculate the gamma AB. And uh, in, that, in that thing, if you just look at Fauch's equation, they haven't used the specific uh, term. But in this particular case, specific term has been incorporated. And you can get gamma A plus gamma B minus 2 square root of gamma A d gamma b d minus 2 square root of gamma a specific gamma b specific and if you simplify it further you will obtain square root of gamma a d minus square root of gamma b d whole square plus gamma a specific square root of that minus gamma b specific square root of that whole square okay and uh, hansen beer uh, actually further take it out take it up and then he has proposed uh, this equation for calculation of uh, surface energy and uh, that is basically gamma a d minus gamma b d square root of them uh, whole square uh, gamma a p this is a polar okay and uh, polar polar component this is a dispersion component and this is the uh, the hydration component okay so he actually divided into three different components not only uh, dispersion and specific component but dispersion specific uh, dispersion polar as well as hydration component uh, then the most robust and most accurate method of calculation of uh, interfacial tension is van os and co-worker uh, uh, method where he ha they have told that the uh, the interfacial tension is basically um, having two components uh, uh, lipids van der Waals component and acid base component uh, uh, so basically they have used gamma LW plus uh, this acid base component, they have actually further dissociated in terms of electron donor and electron acceptor term of the interfacial tension, so gamma plus and gamma minus. So uh, they have put the final equation is gamma A plus gamma B minus 2 square root of gamma A LW, gamma B LW minus 2 square root of gamma A plus gamma B minus uh, minus 2 square root of gamma a minus gamma b minus um i mean it can is i'm really very sorry jami on it it is at the details at the moment uh, because uh, due to time constraint at least uh, for um, uh, but i have just provided you the uh, the equations for surface tension measurement and uh, And uh, another thing is, uh, you don't have to go through this, but uh, from the cell drop method, we can use Adams Westport method in order to calculate the surface energy. So I'm not going into the details. That is again a geometric point of view. What I will do is, uh, I will just uh, uh, put some uh, small problems depending on these equations, and I will solve them and I will post it. And please read it. And uh, by Saturday, please let me know whether you have doubts so we can keep one doubt clearing class on Saturday if necessary. Okay, the problems in general, in general,
মানে ভ্যান্ডারবলস ফোর্সেস থেকে কিন্তু কিছু কিছু প্রবলেমস আসতে পারে সেগুলো আমি করে দিয়ে দেব যাতে আচ্ছা হ্যাঁ করে দিন কি মানে আইডিয়া দা হয় হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ যে তোমাদের প্রবলেমটা না হয় ঠিক আছে আমি জাস্ট করে দিয়ে দেব তার ওই রকম টাইপের প্রবলেম আসবে সেগুলো কিন্তু করে আসবে হ্যাঁ আমি তাহলে পুরো নোটসটা বাই টুমরো আমি এটাকে আপলোড করে দেব হয়তো আজকে রাত্রিটা পারবো না কালকের মধ্যে আমি সমস্ত কিছু আপলোড করে দেব উইথ প্রবলেমস সো দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান গো থ্রু ইট অ্যান্ড ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট সাম ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড অফ দিস থিওরিস আমি যে যেটা পড়ালাম না একদমই একদমই ডিটেলসে একটু ডিটেলসে যেতে পারলাম না সেইটারও একটা নোটস আমি খালি দিয়ে রাখবো ইফ সামবাডি সাম অফ ইউ আর ইন্টারেস্টেড ইউ ক্যান গো থ্রু দ্যাট ঠিক আছে जिज्ञास कर না থাকলে আই উইল স্টপ দা ক্লাস ওভার হিয়ার ম্যাম একটা রিকোয়েস্ট আছে মানে হ্যাঁ আমি বলছি যে মানে একটুখানি মানে সেমিস্টার 70 মার্কস এর জন্য একটু ফোকাল পয়েন্টস গুলো বলবেন মানে একটুখানি যেগুলো মানে আসলে বড় তো সিলেবাসটা মানে আসলে আমি তো অনেক ছোট করে পড়িয়েছি আমি তো কিছুই পড়াইনি ডিটেইলসে তো একটাও যায়নি হ্যাঁ যেহেতু মানে আমাদের একটুখানি মানে নাম্বার অফ সাবজেক্টস গুলো বেশি একটু কি কি पढ़ाई আমি এত থেকে ছোট সিলেবাস করা সম্ভব কিনা আমি জানি না যতটুকু পড়ছি স্যার কেমিস্ট্রি একটু মানে না আমরা সিলেবাস কিন্তু বলতে পারি না আমি যদি একটু সাজেশন টাইপে দেন তাহলে মানে ওই আমাদের মানে মাস্টার একদম যা থাকে তাহলে তো মানে এই সময় একটু একটু বলতে পারতাম এটা প্রবলেমস গুলো পড়ে আসে থিওরিস গুলো একটু করে করে পড়ে আসো আমার মনে হচ্ছে কারণ হচ্ছে যে আমি কোনটা বাদ দেব আর কোনটা বাদ দেব না আমি নিজেও বুঝতে পারছি না ইন্টারটে এই মুহূর্তে দেখো ইনিশিয়াল ফেজে অনেকটা থিওরি আছে আমি যেটা পড়িয়েছি ন্যানোমেটেরিয়ালস प्रिपरेशनে ঠিক আছে টপ ডাউন বটম আপ অ্যাপ্রোচ কি সেখান থেকে একটা দুটো টপ ডাউন একটা দুটো বটম আপ অ্যাপ্রোচ পড়ে আসবে তারপর হচ্ছে তোমার व्हाट আর দ্য ক্লাস डिफरेंट ক্লাসিফিকেশনস অফ ন্যানোমেটেরিয়ালস সেগুলো তোমাকে একটু জানতে হবে এন্ড তোমার ফিজিক্যাল ভেপার ডিপোজিশন কেমিক্যাল ভেপার ডিপোজিশন লিথোগ্রাফিক টেকনিক্স এইগুলো কি আমি আরেকবার একটু রিপিট করব ওই জায়গাটা যেগুলো বললাম হ্যাঁ এই জায়গাটা হ্যাঁ মানে ন্যানোমেটেরিয়াল प्रिपरेशंस এর একদম যেটা ফার্স্ট পড়িয়েছি ঠিক আছে ন্যানোমেটেরিয়াল प्रिपरेशन এর যে জায়গাটা সেখান থেকে তুমি তোমরা যেটা পড়ে আসবে সেটা হচ্ছে যে मोस्टলি টপ ডাউন অ্যাপ্রোচ বটম আপ অ্যাপ্রোচ এন্ড সাম एग्जांपल्स অফ টপ ডাউন some examples of bottom up uh, what are the different kinds of nanomaterials that means uh, 1d 0d 1d 2d 3d uh, what are the differences between them uh, then um the physical vapor deposition chemical vapor deposition lithographic techniques uh, these are very important van der waals forces and forces are jokon dukechi ami jani na okhan theke ami kichu bad dite parbo na forces and ei part ta is complete ম্যাম লিথোগ্রাফিক টেকনিক্স কি মানে সবটাই ইকুয়ালি ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট লাইক মানে ইলেকট্রন বিম লিথোগ্রাফি বা না ফটোলিথোগ্রাফিক টেকনিকটা তোমরা খুব ডিটেইলসে পড়ে আসবে কারণ ফটোলিথোগ্রাফিক টেকনিক এর আমি বোধহয় ক্লাসে অনেকটা এক্সপ্লেইন করেছিলাম আমি দেখলাম যে নোটসে বোধহয় অতটা কিছু নেই 
ওটা আমি জানি না তোমরা নোটস নিয়েছ কি না কিন্তু ওইখানে কিন্তু অনেক কিছু আছে ফটোলিথোগ্রাফিক টেকনিক্স এ বইটা যেটা দিয়েছি সেটা থেকে একটু পড়বার চেষ্টা করো সেখানে যদি ফটোলিথোগ্রাফিক টেকনিক্স থাকে আছে মনে হয় একটা জায়গা মানে ম্যাম আমি না কি প্রসেসের কথা বলছি ভাই ফটোলিথোগ্রাফিক প্রসেস হ্যাঁ প্রসেস ম্যাম বলছিলাম ফটোলিথোগ্রাফি ছাড়া অন্য কিছু অন্যগুলো কি লাইক ন্যানো ম্যাটেরিয়ালসটাকে মানে ন্যানো ম্যাটেরিয়ালসের যে प्रिपरेशन ওইগুলো কি আর বই থেকে ফলো করা দরকার আছে जातुकुम इलेक्ट्रन बीम लिथोग्राफी কিন্তু তারপর হয়তো ডিপেন লিথোগ্রাফিটা তোমরা একটুখানি বাদ দিয়ে দিতে পারো এরকম মানে এইরকম টাইপের আর কি ঠিক আছে আমি কোনটা কোনটা বলেন ডিপেন লিথোগ্রাফি যেটা আছে যেটা এফএম এসটি এসটিএম এর ডিফারেন্সেস গুলো আছে সেটা যেহেতু মানে বই থেকে না পড়লে আলটিমেটলি ওটা কিছু বুঝতে পারবে না মানে নোটস এ যেহেতু অনেকটা কম লেখা রয়েছে ডিফারেন্সেস গুলো বোঝাটা একটু ডিফিকাল্ট হয়ে যাবে সো সেই সেই জায়গাগুলো বাদ দিতে পারো দেখো লাস্টে এএফএম এসটিএম এর একটা এ করা রয়েছে যেটা ডিপেন লিথোগ্রাফি টেকনিক্স করা রয়েছে সেইটা সেই পোরশনটুকো বাদ দিয়ে দাও থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ঠিক আছে স্যার ন্যানো স্ক্যাটারিং পার্টটা ন্যানো ই ন্যানো স্ক্যাটারিং পোরশনটা আমি সেলফ অ্যাসেম্বলি ন্যানো স্ক্যাটারিং ন্যানো স্ক্যাটারিং Yes, ma'am. But that's why we put the self assembly. She learned and was scattering. She learned. No, self assembly to pour ash, but it's uh, self assembly taking to pull out chemistry. The key could be important at the other niche. Ma'am, what's a numerical school of mainly camera forces part of the key? The key, key, ma'am. Numerical school of numerical, numerical school of mostly forces are a as good a contact angle as equation school of the lemma equation school of the dash. ম্যাম ওই আগের ক্লাসে আপনি যেগুলো মানে বলেছিলেন অঙ্কগুলো করাবেন ওগুলো পাঠাবেন হ্যাঁ ওগুলো আমি করে পাঠিয়ে করে পাঠিয়ে দিচ্ছি কালকের মধ্যে আমি সবকিছু আপলোড করে দেব ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে ওকে ম্যাম থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ হ্যাঁ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ এন্ড ফ্রম দা ডেরিভেশনস লাইক देयर वर थ्री ডেরিভেশনস সো ইয়া কাপল অফ ডেরিভেশনস আর देयर সো ইউ हैव टू डू দোজ ডেরিভেশনস ওকে ইন দা ফোর্সেস কাজেই ফোর্সেসটা খুব ভালো করে পড়ে আসো ফোর্সেসটা থেকে কিন্তু অনেকটা কোশ্চেনস থাকবে আচ্ছা আচ্ছা অনেকটা মার্কস ওখানে ক্যারি করবে মানে এই লিথোগ্রাফি ন্যানোমেটারস এগুলো কি মানে আমি শর্ট নোটস হয় মানে এই প্রি ফর্মাল হ্যাঁ এগুলো শর্ট নোটস শর্ট নোটস এগুলোর থেকে আর কিছু মানে এই মুহূর্তে মানে অটোটা ডিটেইলসে ঢুকিনি যে সিভিডি এর সমস্ত ইকুয়েশনস তো লেখাই নি যেখান থেকে তুমি ক্যালকুলেশনে যেতে পারবে কাজেই ওখান থেকে সবই শর্ট নোটস ওকে ওকে আর প্লিজ মানে আই এম রিকোয়েস্টিং অল অফ ইউ যতটা লেখা ততটাই লিখবে বেকার বেকার এক্সট্রা লেখার দরকার নেই মানে ইফ মানে ইফ দা आंसर কামস উইদিন টু লাইনস প্লিজ রাইট দ্যাট you don't have to for 5 marks if i put 5 marks you don't have to write half a page or ha- one page okay. sure karon uh interfacial er puro concept tai tai mane tumi jodi ekta line lekho that should be enough for even if for a 5 marks question thik ache kaje ektu khane bujhe shune likhbe ekta 
সেটা তো লিখতে হবে না ওকে थैंक यू আচ্ছা মানে তিন চারটা সেন্টেন্স লিখে নিও হ্যাঁ মানে তিন চারটি সেন্টেন্সে যদি তোমার आंसरটা তুমি পুরোটা एक्सप्लेन করতে পারো ইউ আর মোস্ট वेलकम সেটাই আমি বলতে চাইছি টু দা পয়েন্ট লিখবে কিন্তু খালি যে লেখার জন্য এক পাতা লিখে গেলাম কি লিখছি জানি না সেটা দরকার নেই ওকে यस मैम थैंक यू सो मच Okay, so all the best, all of you. And uh, if we if we are meeting again, then obviously it's uh, we are going to uh, talk. Otherwise, uh, this is the last class. So all the best to all of you. And uh, I hope that question question is that we have a problem having an interpretation. Manish, please. Ma'am, options will be there in the questions. Yes, it will be. Okay. Today, question to Paralen. Today, today, part to Paralen. Yes. এটার মধ্যে তো ইকুয়েশনস গুলো দেখতি আর ম্যাম ফার্স্ট এর দিকে যে শর্ট নোট কিছু পার্ট যেগুলো দেখাচ্ছে না যে রকম স্প্রেডিং কোএফিসিয়েন্ট ওয়েটিং পোরশন গুলো হ্যাঁ ওগুলো আসতেই পারে মানে ওগুলো হ্যাঁ ওগুলো আসতে পারে ওগুলো জাস্ট মানে থিওরি পার্টস কিন্তু আজকে থেকে আসবে আর কি যার জন্য আমি বইটাও আপলোড করে দিচ্ছি তোমাদের যদি আরেকটু ডিটেইলসে কিছু দরকার হয় সেটা দেখে নাও ঠিক আছে ওকে ম্যাম একটু মানে মেজার জোনস গুলো যদি একটু বলা মানে বইটা তো না বড় হবে मैं Thank you ma'am. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. 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 Th